Today we're being joined by the Greater Western Victoria Rebels Under-18s coach David Lauder. David, thanks for coming on. G'day, Coop. How are you? Thanks for having me. No, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, going well. Going well. Good. So you're the Greater Western Victoria Rebels coach. Um, how did that job opportunity come about? And tell us a bit, a bit, a bit about your coaching journey and where how you got into coaching. It's um, yeah, it's quite a long story actually, Cooper. So I'll, I'll try not to take up too much of your time. But it's actually okay. my second stint back at this level coaching. I coached previously from um, the end of 2010 to 2015. But I originally started um, started coaching local football at a local country club back in. Uh, it was in about 1994. It was my first step into coaching and. I had about 10 years coaching out there, had a couple of years off and um, long story short, ended up in at the Rebels with um, Chris Maple was coaching the Rebels at that point in time, ended up at, at Western Bulldogs. Chris asked me to be, become part of his coaching panel, um, so I joined him there and I had about nine years at the Rebels and then in 2015, I went to North Melbourne for five years. Um, mm -hmm. uh, COVID hit and obviously changed the, the scenery a fair bit in the footy world mm -hmm. and I was lucky enough to just come back and and get the job back at the coach talent league with the rebels so um coach back there in in 21 22 and this is the third year back now in 23 so you mentioned there at north Melbourne, i did have that written down so how was that five years in north Melbourne? obviously with the vfl coach is that correct as well down there in north Melbourne, and how was that yeah, so our, our alignment was with werribee for a couple of years so we we mm -hmm. were our vfl alignment was Werribee Football Club, and then we got mm. our own VFL team, um, and I coached them for the first couple of years of of the mm. uh, the competition, which was which was wonderful, great experience to be involved with the setup of a VFL club, um, and just thoroughly enjoyed. Obviously, worked under a couple of different coaches, but mainly under Brad Scott. Um, mm -hmm. and you learn a lot, and you work with you know some great people, Gavin Brown and the likes, and um, had, a, had a great time at North Melbourne, loved my years there, um, learned a lot, um, and unfortunately COVID, as I touched on earlier, Cooper, changed the uh, changed the landscape a bit of footy for a bit. Yeah. So you mentioned the time there in North Melbourne, what, in the VFL as well, but what is the difference between, for people that don't know too much, of coaching an AFL-aligned VFL team compared to, say, well, where we were, it was AFL-aligned, but, you know, you had your own local place as well, where North Melbourne, you also have that, but you've got the AFL Cedric. How much influence do the AFL coaches have in how you position players, you know, like how many, how much game time they play and everything like that compared to, say, Werribee? Yeah, it's a, it's a real juggling act, and I'm sure every alignment's different. Um, we got along pretty well with Werribee. We were lucky we could have really open, honest conversations about where players were at and what the needs were. At, there's no doubt about it at stages – the views from the two clubs were different. Werribee were in the business mm. of winning games of football, which is which is perfectly understandable for them, whereas we were trying to develop players and probably had a little bit more of a focus on, okay, even if a player is perhaps not performing that great in that position, we need to stick with them and, and just continue to teach and learn and that to make them um, the best possible version of themselves they could be. So... There was perhaps a different view on what was required to go forward at, at stages, and mm. but that that makes football interesting too, mate. So the, the mm. change when we got our own VFL team was we were just a little bit more streamlined, obviously, obvious, obviously to the needs of the the head coach being Scotty and then Reese. Mm. With we were pretty much able to do exactly what we wanted with our young players to to get them through to AFL level. Who were some of the players while you were at North Melbourne that you took under your wing or someone that, you, even when you're coaching the VSL, that, that you were really high on and um, hoping they could make successful careers and they're doing that right now? Yeah, I'll, I'll probably a couple come to mind. Nick Larkey, who, who's just made the, the All-Australian team, um, mm. big played a couple of years in our VFL um, team. We didn't have Joyce Simpkin a lot. Joyce sort of been – we had him for a couple of games, but he played – predominantly AFL football. Luke Davies Uniac played some footy with us. Um, the list goes on and on, Bailey Scott and, and those type of players. But um, 
it's it's wonderful now watching those boys go around and play their trade at AFL level, and they're, they're playing some great footy at the minute, and hopefully they've got a really bright future um, with North Melbourne. So out of all the years of you coaching through the Rebels and North Melbourne and back at the Rebels and everywhere else, who would you say is some of your coaching success stories that you've coached that you've seen shoot up? Is, is it someone like Nick Larky or is there some others that come to mind? Oh, there's there, there's lots and lots of players, um, I suppose, when you've been in the system or in the coaching ranks for as long as I have, Cooper, you've, you've coached a lot of different players. Um, it's a little bit different at coach level league, at the under-18 league, because yeah. you're probably shaping players a little bit more. You, you're getting... You're getting to work with those guys from perhaps when they're about 15, so you you can perhaps have a little bit more influence. By the time a player's 18 or 19, you're tidying up some things and they're learning some strategic stuff and that, but a lot of the core stuff they've learnt is is relatively well developed by then. Um, you, you look back very fondly on nearly every player you've worked with, you know, and, mm. and there's, there's, there's some players that, haven't played at the highest level that we've probably, where I've probably been as successful with um, because they came from a way lower base. So mm. um, they're, they're relatively high success stories as well. Um, and then you turn around and you look at someone like Aaron Cadman last year who, yeah. who came from a fair way back to being the number one draft pick, you know, and, and was just mm. such a great young man to work with and, improved so much in in the 18 months that we had him so um there's stories like that i mean i've been really lucky you know i worked with the crouch boys and jeremy cameron and you know mm. hopper and all there's the list goes on and on dan butler and all those kids that come through your ranks obviously you're working with the high end when you're at afl or vfl level but um yeah it's it's great working just with really dedicated athletes and you'd like to think cooper there's a lot more success mm. stories than than ones that didn't work yeah so for people that want some advice into getting into coaching what how, what would you recommend they do to try and get into coaching whether that's at local level or how what advice would you give them for someone that's looking to be join the coaching ranks in some form it's a it's a really good question um cooper it's <laughs> it's one of those things that you you need to be in my opinion you've got to be all in You've really got to yeah. want to do it and you've got to want to help someone. I don't think you can go into coaching and say, oh, it's 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 Tuesday night and it's Thursday night and it's a game on the weekend and it goes for six months of the year. It's so much more than that. Mm. Um, and that, that's just my opinion. Maybe other coaches have different opinions on that, but it becomes certainly for, for someone like myself who's lucky enough to work in the industry full-time, um, it is full-time. It's 24-7. You don't mm. stop you don't stop um, talking to players. Um, the phone rings at 11 o'clock at night and people say, oh, you need to balance it and have a, you know, you, you can just turn your phone off. But I, th I think sometimes we just can't. If it's a player ringing, then mm. you, you think, well, they really need to talk to me. So um, that would be the one thing that I would say that they need to have is the, the investment to be, to be in it. You've got to be really, really involved and you've got to probably live it. Um, mm -hmm. and don't ever underestimate the importance that you can have as a coach, um, whether you're coaching under 10 football or you're coaching AFL football. Is, um, unfortunately, for some young players, for boys or girls, you might be the one solid um, thing that they have in their life um, that you get to spend a couple of nights a week in and in a game on the weekend with. So don't underestimate the influence you're having on players on field and off field uh, in your coaching role. So your current season with the Rebels, um, going pretty well, finishing second the ladder, got in the final this week. Uh, how have you viewed the boys' season so far? Because they've obviously done pretty well at this point, get to second the ladder. Yeah, we've we've had a we've had another really strong season, which we're which we're really pleased with. Um, and there's a number mm. of positives to come out of it. Obviously, the development of our our 44 players that have played this year has been has been terrific to watch. Um, but the boys that are playing at the minute. Uh, one of the highlights is perhaps um, our, we've got some certainly some top end talent that we're hoping can go on and and you know play a part in the draft this year and, and go on and have successful mm. AFL careers for the next level down. Hopefully they can get onto VFL lists and play at the highest level that they're capable of. There'll always be some boys, especially from a remote regions, that 
want to go home and stay on the farm and it'll just be great players back at their local clubs. But but that's that's fantastic mm-hmm. too. That's a win. Um, but we've got a lot of bottom age players playing at the minute. We've got mm-hmm. quite a young group playing. So that's really exciting for us at this point in time, but it's exciting for the future mm-hmm. as well. I think last week, Cooper, we had 15, 17-year-olds played. So, um, yeah, that's a great for us. Okay. So, Lockie Charles and Ozzy, who shot up in draft runs recently, goals not too long ago. Have you viewed his season? Expectations are for him now that he's up and sometimes there's one or two huge performances to be known. Now he's a bit heavily to get drafted. Yeah, he's he's um his roles changed probably in the in the last month, and he's really relished the change of position. He played he played predominantly as a midfielder um, in the middle part of the or certainly in the early part of the year. He did spend some time forward, but he's been um, a permanent small forward over the last month. So his last four games, he's actually had forty shots on goal in his last four <laughs> games. So. He's um yeah. yeah he's he's had um obviously a, a real breakout game when he kicked eight four one week um mm. and and I think he I think he got two out on the full that day as well so <laughs> he was certainly certainly really impressive that game but he's followed up again with um, four again last weekend and and we're looking to him just to continue his form through the finals and and show people what he's good at he's one of those players that's really quite rounded in nearly every aspect of the game and um, and a wonderful young man to work with. So, um, yeah, he's having a really good year. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry if I pronounced these names wrong. <laughs> Leman Loyal and Joel Fraser. Um, are they two other guys you expect that could be drafted this season and how have your thoughts been on their seasons as well? Yeah, got really high hopes for both of the boys. Um, Lamont Loyal uh, rebounding half back. Can play midfield as well from South Warrnambool Footy Club. He's um, he's a great one-on-one defender, but he's taken his game to a new level this year in breaking lines and a lot more offense in his in his game at the minute. Um, he's uh, he's cat-like. He doesn't go to ground very much. He's wonderful, wonderfully balanced and can win a contest and then and then gather the ball and go forward. And he's had a he's had a terrific year. He played some great national games and. Um, Looking for him to play well again over the next week or or couple of weeks if we can continue through the finals, and Joel Fruge is uh, another player, a, a really big, strong uh, outside running mid. He runs as good of patterns probably as I've seen for a long time. He's he's incredibly gifted in being able to get back and help our back half and and mark the ball in defence. But he he's got a such a high running capability that he can. Even on fast play, he can get forward and affect the game forward of the ball as well. So another player that's had a really good year for us. Who are some players outside of those three guys that um, you feel from your club of the Rebels that people should keep an eye out on that could potentially be drafted? Yeah, George Stevens is is the other player. Of course, um, yeah. George, is, um, George is a genuine inside mid. Um, he's He's been able to show certainly across – the season, just how consistent he be. He's, he's averaging, oh, I'm not sure, 28, 29 touches a game. Had mm. a great Nationals carnival. Can, can play across half back, but um, does his best work in around the footy. He's a big, strong lad. He's he's super clean with the ball and he kicks it really, really well. So, um, and a very, very smart player. And he's um, he's in rare vein of form at the minute, George. He, he, He's almost at the minute like he doesn't know how to play bad. So uh, another <laughs> player that really we've got high hopes for. Um, and all those boys, you know, above everything else, Cooper, they're just such terrific young men. Um, we've certainly yeah. got some boys on the on the periphery of that. We've got another half a dozen players that we probably don't need to mention. But yeah. we've got some boys that can bob up at any point in time. And as you touched on before, you know, you play a, a wonderful finals game or a couple, um, mm-hmm. you never know what the AFL clubs need. So... Um, we keep we keep our hopes high for everyone. That's true. That's very true. Now, some of the guys that you've had drafted recently since you've rejoined, you've got names like Aaron Cadman, James Van Ness at the Saints, Hugh Bond at the Crows, Josh Kipkis at Richmond, Harry Sharp at the Lions, and Sam Butler at the Hawks. Um, how do how do you think viewed some of those guys' seasons so far since they've joined? Obviously, I know some of those guys haven't played an AFL game yet, but like Cadman, you mentioned earlier, but guys like Josh Kipkis, who's been injury 
injured this year but had a terrific first season. What's your thoughts yeah. on some of those guys' seasons? Yeah, we've, we're, so um, yeah we've had, um, you know, and I, I, I could I could talk to to all of those players. Probably the one that's that's had a really good year has been Ben Hobbs. Hobbs, he's really oh, had yeah, a great year at, at Essendon, um, playing as a genuine inside mid and... Um, the role that he played with us and was was so good at. Um, so it's, it's wonderful to see Hobbsy doing what he's doing. Uh, you touched on Josh Gipkis. Unfortunately, Josh has had a had a horror year for injury um, with the hamstring troubles he's had. But mm-hmm. showed, I think, in his first season how how great a talent he is. Um, mm. Sammy, Sammy Butler playing that that pressure forward role and has been able to get some more games under his belt this year and. Um, such a high-end talent that we're looking forward to seeing how he develops. Kyle Lohman fits the same bill up at Brisbane. Um, mm. Obviously a challenge for, for Kai playing in such a good side um, right at the minute and so many great players around him. But, gee, he's an exciting player, um, named in the VFL Team of the Year squad. So he's been really good, um, obviously, in some of his AFL games, but some of his um, VFL football as well. James Van Ness in his first year developing at the Saints. Um, Aaron's had a had some games in um, and out and probably the most challenging position to play and nearly the hardest spot. When you get drafted as a key forward, it's um, mm-hmm. it's, it's really tricky because of the change of rules from the, the Coach Talent League obviously has a, an anti-density um, rule. So... Um, mm. Someone like Aaron, as a as a lighter, really tall, talented player, gets a lot of one on one football in the in the coach talent league with the anti density yeah. stuff. Where you don't get that when you go into the AFL. There's there's two or three defenders, and there's um, there's someone a superstar like Tom Stewart coming over the top to support. Mm. And, uh, so it's a real challenge for those boys. But Aaron's loving his footy, and and he'll settle mm. in and show the world. Um, how good a player he is. And Hugh Bond, I think, was the other one we haven't touched on yet. And Hugh's yeah. um, been one that's that's battled a lot of injury this year and is just back playing now with the Crows. So, um, mm. again, terrific, terrific young men, um, yeah, wonderful guys that, that I, I was lucky enough to work with and hopefully the, the seven of those boys we've just spoken about have great careers. Now, I have to ask this. Um, do you feel sometimes when getting drafted, sometimes a location of a club – could sometimes put off AFL recruits picking people. Because the reason I ask that is because you see some, some sides like Sandy Dragons and the clubs in Melbourne, in Centric in Melbourne, get a lot, a lot of players drafted each and every year. Do you do you think the location of a club impacts that selection where, say, recruits may not go – obviously, they do watch, but, like, not as much as some of the other clubs because they're close to them and uh, sides like the Rebels are a bit further out? Uh, no, I don't, Cooper. I um... – I think um, I you couldn't quote me on the numbers, but I think there's been more country yeah. boards drafted in the last few years than there has metro boards. Um, yeah. The one thing, the one thing I can say, and I can't really really talk about the metro programs because I don't I don't know enough about them. But what I can say about the country programs, and and this doesn't just go for the rebels, this goes for the six country regions. Our boys do an incredible amount of work to even be part of the program. We have some mm. players that drive, uh, and I'm talking one way, that travel yeah. nearly three hours to get to a training session. Um, yeah. And then they train and it's nearly three hours home. Like, I mean, the, to, to, to make an analogy, mate, that would be like going to someone at the Northern Knights and saying, well, we're going to train in Yarrawonga every Thursday night. Um, mm. I, I reckon they'd sit back and go, well, we, that's impossible to do, but our our players do that. That's the sort of stuff they do. So, when you get mm. a talented player that that does that for two years or three years and gets to a draftable age to be looked at by AFL clubs, um, I imagine that the eighteen AFL clubs go, "Well, this this guy is going to be a lock with travel, um, mm. shifting interstate because of the work that they've already put in." Um, we we just don't have too many boys that hop in a car and travel five minutes to training. We don't have that luxury now. I know the metro regions would face challenges in all sorts of other other areas um, of their yeah. program, but for the country boys, that's the tyranny of distance for us is enormous. And what our yeah. boys um, do and how many k's and hours they spend on the road to even be part of a program is 
is phenomenal. Um, we could talk about it all day and mm. and um, the commitment they show to do that shows what great characters they are. And, gee, it's a pretty good spot to start if you happen to draft one of these boys. So one more question left for you, David. So I really appreciate you coming on. Going to take off the coaching hat for a second here and put on the uh, recruiting hat. Who would you say is the top five draft picks this year? Obviously, got Harley Ring guys like that. How would you rank the top five? So I had asked a few yeah. coaches this and I uh, had some interesting answers. Yeah, it's it's um, you, you probably tend to notice the guys that you've worked with a little bit or you've had something to do with, mm -hmm. even even just briefly. Um, look, Harley's an exceptional talent, but. But above mm. above that, he's just such a he's just such a great young man, um, and yeah. I, I, Cooper, I I think it's so important now that they that they're really good citizens, and he ticks that box as well. So um, mm. he, he's he's a ripper. I, I don't know a lot. I know they're really talented. Um, the big mm. lad from the big lad from Queensland. You know, he's a, he's a really yeah. yeah. We we um, we played a game against him. Uh, earlier in the year, and he kicked about six goals, and and we went, gee, mm -hmm. he's going to be a good player. Um, I'm I'm a fan of um, Zane Dersma. I, yeah. I think I think Zane, when he's at his best, is is capable of of doing you know pretty much anything. He's he's just got such high end talent. Mm -hmm. um, so oh, I I tend to probably look at the at the Vic Country boys more than the Metro boys because I just don't have anything to do with the, the Metro yeah. boys. Um, you know, Archer Reed ag again from Gippsland's a great player. The list, look, the list goes on mm. and on and on. Um, and it just comes back really to which club needs needs what at what point in time. Um, mm. and, and, again, linking back in your conversation a minute ago with, you know, if West Coast have got the number one pick, well, you know, are they going to take a West Australian boy or are they going to take someone and, and hope that they can keep him? Because if it's someone mm -hmm. with the calibre of Liam Duggan, you know, that, mm -hmm. that, that is is actually, you know, a, a Bacchus Marsh boy, so played with the Western Jets, went to school in Ballarat. Um, he, he's, he's an outstanding citizen, Liam, and he has he has no interest in in leaving the West Coast. He's a, he's a star. So if you can get someone like that, and Aaron Cadman fitted the same bill with GWS, yeah. Um, if you can get players like that, well, it doesn't matter where in the country they come from, they'll they'll make it work for you. So um, I know I've only mentioned three or four there, mate, but um, they're yeah, the ones fine. that are a sharp end for me. No, right, David, I really appreciate you coming on. Good luck in the final series and hopefully at the end uh, they make it all the way to the grand final and win it there. So, David, appreciate you coming on. Thanks, Cooper. Appreciate nice, you coming